Um, with that said, uh, Joe, do you want to start us off? Ready, to Rock? Yeah, thanks, Preston. Hey, hey, Joe, good to see you. Good to see you. Um, you know, I'll ask the obvious. Uh, just your background with Cam uh, prior to, to to now, and what you know, you know, kind of kind of what you envision with him in this offense. Yeah, obviously got to know Cam, you know, when uh, when we got the job here and got to spend a lot of time with him. And, um, you know, obviously, you know, the player that he's been for, you know, a lot of years at this organization. And so i um, excited to be able to work with him. Um, I get to really work with him again. You know, we talked a little bit before and, you know, had a great conversation with him last night. And, um, you know, uh, you know, we'll uh, as, as the weeks go on, you know, we'll be able to kind of uh, get a vision and ex expand on the package and go from there. But right now, you know, he's in the process of, just picking up and learning, you know, what, what we do and how we call things and, uh, you know, and then everything will kind of take care of itself uh, going from there. And then my one follow-up is uh, there was a lot of talk about sort of his mechanics post shoulder surgery. Uh, wondered if you've studied those and if you have some ideas about working with him mechanically. Um, yeah. I mean, there's, there's obviously, you know, stuff that, you know, everybody always, you know, you hope to, that you can you work with and improve on. And I'm excited to be able to get with him out on the practice field and, um, you know, kind of just see, see where he's at. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure that uh, there's been growth from his standpoint and uh, I'm excited to be able to work with it and, you know, without getting into specifics. All right, let's go to Mike Salarte. Hey, Joe, how are you doing? What's up, Mike? Uh, you know, obviously Cam coming in uh, is, is a dynamic that will be applied probably next week. I don't know if there's a plan for him at all for this week, but was there a note, has there been a noticeable lift in the guys with his arrival? And I mean, not necessarily something you see on the field, but it just in terms of attitude and emotion and, and body language, that sort of thing. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure there is, uh, you know, naturally, you know, when I think some of the news and stuff broke yesterday, you know, we had already finished practicing, we're in meetings and whatnot, um, you know, but you feel his presence, you know, at all times, you know, when he just walks in a room, uh, you know, and that's something that everybody's kind of known here for years. And so, um, you know, it hasn't been anything where, you know, everyone's, you know, uh, you're hearing it, they're talking about it, but you just know, you feel his presence and, um, you know, I'm excited to be able to work with him and, um, um, you know, excited to, uh, you know, see him on the football field. And if I could just follow up with uh, your offensive line for this week, I, I don't, I've lost track of how many different starting combinations you guys have gone through, but now with Matt and, and Cameron not being uh, available, uh, Matt, for the rest of the year, Cam, at least the next three. I mean, how, how tough of a task is it to try to scheme up when the personnel is changing on that group, in that position group? You know, Mike, it, it is tough, um, you know, uh, especially at, in the, at the O-line room, you know, just O-line positions and in football in general, you know, the continuity and just being able to play with each other. And, you know, you get your right guard with your right tackle, understanding calls and how they set and, you know, combination blocks. You know, there's a lot of stuff to that um, and the fortunate reality. And, and, and we said it, you know, going into the season, you know, we, we made sure in, in training camp that we, we move guys around at times, just knowing that, you know, 17 game season, you know, the odds of having the same five the whole time, you know, was, uh, wasn't, wasn't a high probability, but, uh, there has been a lot of a lot of change from that standpoint, and it is tough. But at the end of the day, these guys are professionals. Um, you know, it's our job to try to put them in positions to have success and, and for them to execute. And, you know, whatever five, you know, ever goes out on the football field. And even last week, you know, after was it the second play, you know, uh, Tech going in playing center, you know, uh, it's my job to have confidence in them. And I have confidence in them. And, you know, just with the work that they put in and whoever the five that are out there, I believe that they're going to be able to get the job done. Go to David Newton. Hey, sorry, Joe. I'm actually driving my car. So uh, I was Safe. curious, how many plays do you anticipate having ready for Cam to potentially play on Sunday? And, and how long did y'all stay at the stadium uh, working with him last night? Um, look, we're, uh, you know, I think that's that's all stuff that's, um, you know, everything's on the table right now. And, and we'll kind of just evaluate from a day-to-day -day standpoint and without getting into specifics. And, and we'll just kind of see what, you know, what today brings and, you know, kind of how things progress and um, just be ready to rock on Sunday. And we'll just kind of see, uh, see how things go. And how much you plan to, to when you, he actually plays to cater the offense around what he does with the read option and how much experience do you have with the read option? Um, you know, like, I think, I think a lot of that stuff, you know, will, will obviously come into play and, and, you know, we'll evaluate those things, you know, as it comes, but, you know, right now my focus is, you know, strictly on the, you know, the Arizona Cardinals, you know, we got a huge task, ahead of us this week. And so a lot of those things, a lot of those thoughts will, you know, will 
will slowly start creeping in your mind and, and you got to obviously be ready for them, you know, but right now, you know, just focusing on the game plan right now and, you know, uh, and uh, getting ready for Sunday. Thank you. All right, let's go to Brett Jensen. Hey, Joe, uh, in terms of running quarterbacks, I know that PJ is mobile and I know that, you know, at LSU, you know, Burrow was a little bit mobile as well, but nothing to the extent of like Cam Newton. Have you ever been around mobile quarterbacks like a Cam Newton or a Lamar Jackson, something like that, that can just really, really run? And do you have to tweak your offense much to deal with that? Well, I, you know, I don't think there's anybody that's, you know, there's only a few guys in the game that have been able to have the success that those guys have had running, throwing, you know, there is, there's, there's never been another Cam Newton, um, you know, another Lamar Jackson, some of those guys, I mean, they're, you know, the, they're, they're as elite as it gets. Um, so uh, unless I'm coaching them, I definitely don't have that experience. Um, but I know, I, th I think uh, you have to just figure out what the guys do well, um, you know, and, and understand, you know, the, the toll that it can have on their bodies potentially running and, you know, what schemes and how they, you know, see things with their eyes if they are running, um, you know, but uh, I think that's, uh, you know, that's part of the growing in the relationship and understanding the communication and, and where things are. But uh, um, obviously, you know, you know, you know, you guys all know how big he is and, you know, how dynamic he is with the ball in his hands, both running it and throwing it. And so, um, you know, I'm excited to be able to work with him and, and we'll figure out, you know, what, the, what the, how the best way is to utilize him, you know, as the season goes. Or were you looking your chops a little bit, considering all the different possibilities you might be able to do with him that you haven't maybe been able to do otherwise? You know, but to be honest with you, you know, it's it's uh, it's been a unique week from that standpoint because you know my focus right now, you know, is you know trying to beat the Arizona Cardinals, um, you know, an eight-one football team, you know, with one of the best defenses in, in football, and so um, you know, uh, obviously ex exciting news to be able to you know get Cam and be able to you know improve our football team. You know, at the same time, I, you know, my focus has to be on getting this offense and getting PJ Walker ready to perform this weekend. Um, and so, uh, you know, it's been it's been a unique week. Um, it's been an exciting week, and I'm excited for Sunday. Right, let's go to Ellis Williams next. Hey, Joe, I, I'm wondering how does the addition of someone like Cam Newton injecting him into your offense change the way you potentially call a game, change the way you're teaching your offense, and, and just alter your offensive unit as a whole? Um, you know, I, without getting sp the specifics of it, I think, you know, you're going to have to kind of figure it out, you know, as, as things go, it's different when you, when you make an acquisition, maybe in the OTAs or right before training camp or whatnot, you know, sometimes you do things in season, there's a little bit of give and take in, in terms of, Hey, you know, the rest, a lot of our guys know this, Hey, but you can do this, you know, so it'll be a, it'll be a healthy blend. Um, you know, the core of what we do, um, will be what we do. Um, and you know, it, it'll be exciting whenever he is in there to, to see him kind of take a hold of, you know, um, what he can do well and, uh, and make the most of it. And like I said, you know, just like any relationship with a quarterback and offensive coordinator and offense, you know, as games go, you grow and you understand, you know, what, um, what each person can do and how each other thinks. And, uh, you know, so uh, there's a lot of endless, uh, you know, possibilities, but, uh, you know, he's an, an extremely intelligent football player in person. So he'll be able to pick up this offense and be able to, you know, um, you know, kind of take it into his own and, um, you know, put his stamp on it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I don't see any other hands raised. Do you guys have any more questions for Joe? Yeah, I, I can jump in with one question. Go ahead. Hey, Joe, I'm waving at you so you can see me on the screen. Yeah, I got you. Uh, the, uh, getting off to a good start Sunday, I mean, it's, it's paramount every week, but with the ability that Arizona has with their offense being as, as dangerous as they are, I mean, I, I know you're on the offensive side of the ball, but how do you employ your guys? We got to be on our, we got to be as sharp as possible each and every week, but especially this week. Yeah, no, it's, um, you know, these guys, these guys are obviously dynamic offensively and they're, you know, extremely dynamic defensively. Um, they don't have really weaknesses to their football team. And so um, it's critical for us to stay on the football field. The, the more that we're on the football field, the uh, the less that, you know, to your point, their offense is on it, you know, and, and that's, that's a lot easier said than done. So it'll be critical for us to, um, you know, stay ahead of the change, you know, be able to capitalize on third downs and, and take advantage of it. And so um, it's a huge task at us and, you know, we're excited for the opportunity and I'm excited to see PJ go in there and, um, and, and beat PJ Walker. And so, uh, no, yeah, it's, it's one of those games, you know, I obviously I can't focus a lot on what they're doing offensively. You know, we got a, enough of a, you know, a task on, on our hands, um, but um, you know, our guys are, are excited for it and I'm sure it'll be a great atmosphere in there and um, it'll be a great football game. Let's go to Jonathan Alexander. 
Jonathan, you're on mute right now. You did, my brother. Oh, my bad, my bad. Um, so I think Ellis kind of asked my question, but it got cut out. But I wanted to ask, like, is it difficult, you know, when you have to plan for different quarterbacks who have different styles in general, like either year to year or even week to week, like um, like such? And if it is that difficult, like, how do you adjust to that? Yeah, no, uh, I'm, you know, it's a, it's a unique situation. You know, I, I think back to, I remember the Detroit game last year when, you know, it was, uh, you didn't know if, you know, which quarterback was going to be starting. You ended up having three call sheets, you know, and just going through each guy and just preparing them all, um, you know, because that's the, um, it's the exciting thing about the quarterback room is you have a bunch of different skill sets. Um, and uh, it's important that, you know, depending on what quarterback is in there, you know, you're utilizing their talents and what they do well. And so, uh, um, there is there is definitely a difference um, and it's definitely something that, you know, you might have certain plays that say, hey, this is this guy has more confidence in this play or, hey, this is more suited towards him. But at the end of the day, you know, you can't you can't just keep putting in a bunch of plays because that the, the rest of the guys have to learn the stuff as well. So you got to find that happy medium um, and find ways for, you know, each quarterback to be able to have success, but our guys be able to execute as well. All right. Get a couple more in here. So let's go to David Newton and then Brett Jensen. Yeah, Joe, I'm just curious. I mean, even before the shoulder, Sam had struggled for much of the time for about four or five weeks. What do you see as his future at Carolina? Um, you know, that's that's something that's, um, you know, that I don't really spend a lot of, of time thinking about. I'm, you know, I'm focused on this week and, you know, I'm focused on Sam getting healthy again and, and you know, and, and going from there. I know uh, right now the biggest thing for him is getting his shoulder back and, and be ready to rock whenever his time comes again. Um, that's uh and right now, just focusing on the Arizona Cardinals. I know Sam's in a, in a good place of mind right now. He knows the, what he has to get done, you know, get his shoulder right, and, and we'll kind of go from there. Joe, I want to go back to what uh, Mike Slarte asked you near the very beginning about the offensive line. I know the big stories the last year and a half has been about the absence of Christian McCaffrey, but maybe lost in that is the fact that you're, you've had no continuity with the offensive line last year or this year with all these injuries. Is that in some ways maybe even more difficult to, to deal with than the loss of a star player just because you never have the same people at the same position continuously? I think everything is, you know, uh, ideal world is you always have your, your best 11 at all times, but um, you can't spend a lot of time with it. You know, football goes on. We learned that last year and you can't make excuses for anything and you can't let others make excuses for you. So the reality of it is, you know, whoever are out there, whether it's um, you know, all the five backup linemen that you went in the season with, whether it's without Christian McCaffrey, you got to find a way to get the job done. And, uh, you know, if you spend a lot of time trying to figure out the, or, you know, uh, there's no woe is me, you know, we got to, I have a job to do. And um, regardless who's out there, I got to find a way to get the job done. And so, um, you know, obviously a lot of things play into factor of that. Um, you know, you want to have all the offense line up and, you know, but you got to have confidence and you got to trust your personnel department, your coaches to, to bring in the guys and coaches to be able to develop them. And so that, you know, whoever's out there is going to be able to have success. All right, guys, that's going to do it. Joe, we appreciate it. Appreciate you guys.